before Twitter, before Facebook, before social media overtook our society at large, in El Salvador there was a huevo. A huevo was a website that was a weird sort of mashup of Craigslist and Reddit. And there was a classified section where you'd see people selling their Nintendo 64, but there was also a rumor section on the site that was like a forum where people would post current events going on in the country or talk about gossip and stuff like that. When I was a kid, the internet was barely getting started. Back then, there was no Skype to talk to people face to face with or get messages from robots pretending to be women that are interested in you. We had ICQ, a primitive instant messaging program that had an annoying uh-oh sound whenever a friend sent you a message and you didn't use your email address to sign up for it they'd give you a universal internet number so you'd have to write it down on a piece of paper and tell your friends at school okay you ready my uin is 709-21-1414 and they'd have to write it down it was a real clunky system, kind of like how Nintendo did it with the Wii and friend codes decades later, which says a lot about how up to speed they are with this whole internet thing. Back then, our knowledge of what exactly was on the internet was also limited. There was no front page of Reddit or sites like StumbleUpon where you could find out about cool websites or interesting articles or anything. You just type out stuff in Netscape Navigator like fart.com and hope for the best, or search for stuff on Alta Vista and see if anything cool popped up. Back then, something going viral was when everyone in your class knew about the hamster dance website and it was always awesome whenever you found that one other person at your school that knew about stuff like I like milk or Zombocom. There was one kid in my class that was always ahead of the curve when it came to internet stuff though. He was a hacker and his hacker alias was Haomaru because that was his favorite character in Samurai Showdown. He'd send me stuff on ICQ that would open up my computer's disk drive without me having touched anything. He'd make my printer print out Andy Sucks Haomaru rules over and over made out of ones and zeros. Or he'd send me a thing that made an error message pop up on my screen. But whenever I hovered my mouse over it to make it go away, it would keep moving to another spot. He was also also in the know when it came to cool sites on the internet and he introduced us to stuff like the 8 balls teen chat house where we'd pretend to be cool 18 year olds and we'd ask girls if they wanted a cyber or at least people that claimed they were girls and he'd show us messed up sites like rotten.com and fuck up our innocent minds so one day me and some friends are at school and the hacker guy says dudes check it out i just found out about the hottest new site it's called a huevo so we all follow him into the computer lab he types in the web address and he clicks on the rumors section of the site he explains that a huevo has a database of every school in El Salvador and that people post gossip topics and rumors about students every day. He tells one of my friends, go ahead, search for someone you know. So he types the name of a girl he likes from another school and she shows up in a whole bunch of different topics. He reads a post about how she was caught making out with another guy from her school by the lockers. So he's heartbroken and curled up in a ball in the corner of the computer lab, but the rest of us are excited to see if any of us have been mentioned on a huevo. So we start looking our names up, but none of us get any results. The hacker dude says, that's the thing, our school hasn't caught on yet, but trust me, in a few weeks it definitely will. And catch on, it did. Within a few days, other kids at school found out about a huevo and started posting there. And the first few weeks, the topics were pretty harmless. With things like, I heard that a girl from 6th grade likes Carlos from 7th grade. Or a post where a girl would compliment some other girl's nail polish color. But somewhere along the line, the whole school got caught up in the huevo craze. And soon there were dozens of new topics being posted every couple of hours. And people started doing whatever they could to be mentioned on there. Girls started showing up at school wearing shorter and shorter skirts. Guys would interrupt the teachers and try to get kicked out of class on purpose, and they'd all get mentioned on a huevo later that day. Some kid would punch a hole in a classroom wall, and as he was being escorted out of the class to the principal's office, people would say, that's so gonna be on a huevo tonight. Kind of like kids filming their friend getting kicked in the balls and they say this is so going up on YouTube. Or even worse, when you see a video of two guys fighting on the street and the guy holding the camera says, Yo, world star! Everyone wanted their names plastered all over a huevo. They wanted to stand out. And it started affecting people's behavior at school. One day I'm at school and I can't quite put my finger on it, but something feels off. Everyone's acting real weird. Some girls yelling random stuff in the hallways. One guy's wearing a silly hat and dancing on top of tables. And some kids running running around the basketball court with a bedsheet over him and he's making ghost noises. I go to the cafeteria and a guy in front of me buys a can of coke. He opens it and then he's like, whoa shit, watch out, this one's alive. And he starts acting like he's trying to wrangle
strangle his can of soda, bumping into people and spilling it everywhere. He takes a gulp of soda and he says, Sorry about that, I'm just kind of crazy like that sometimes, haha. <laughs> and he walks away. The whole day is filled with weird interactions. So I check a huevo when I get home, and right there at the top of the page, there's a topic posted the night before asking people who they think the funniest person at school is. I check the comments and people are saying, Ghost guy is the funniest. And someone else says they saw a guy do a coke monster routine that was awesome. And then the strange events at school finally start to make more sense. So every day I'd go to school and everyone would be acting weird. Someone posts a topic on a huevo asking who the clumsiest but cutest girl at school is. And the next day the girls are tripping over themselves, dropping their books in front of you. Every day felt like I'd been transported to an alien world. Being talked about as the best this or that of the entire school on a huevo put a lot of pressure on everyone. I was in the running for who's the most athletic at school, not because I was a star athlete or anything, but just because 99.9% .9 of El Salvador plays soccer and I played baseball. So whenever we'd play kickball during gym class, no one even knew any of the rules, so I was automatically seen as the best. As soon as I saw I was one of the top three finalists on a huevo, I found myself taking it very seriously. And every time we'd play kickball in school after that, the pressure was on and I'd have to work extra hard to prove to people that I was worthy of the votes I was getting on a huevo. I didn't end up winning the contest but I dodged a huge bullet because the people that were crowned the most macho guy in school or the girl with the best hair, those people quickly learned the harsh realities of popularity and fame and learned about the tendency people have to build someone up just so they can tear them down. Before being proclaimed as the girl with the best hair in the entire school, that girl was just a girl with cool looking hair, that was it. After she was crowned as the best, she had to wake up two hours earlier every day just to make sure she had enough time to primp and prime her hair, because she knew as soon as she stepped foot in the school, all eyes would be on her to see if she was living up to her reputation, and the whole school demanded perfection. Some people would hover around her and inspect her hair, waiting for the day when she showed up with split ends or had a bad hair day. Over the weeks, she had to keep radically changing her hairstyle so people wouldn't think she was resting on her laurels and taking her title for granted. Her hands would shake from the stress of it all, and she had big bags under her eyes from the lack of sleep, but her hair always looked silky and awesome, and that's all that really mattered. When a huevo first became a thing, everyone in school was fighting tooth and nail to have their names mentioned on there as much as they could. We hadn't seen the dark side of fame yet. We were all fresh-faced Justin Bieber singing Chris Brown covers in our living rooms, oblivious to the years of rehab and therapy the path we've chosen is about to send us on. Now we were all too aware that being well known came with its share of consequences. So kids at school started doing everything in their power to not bring any attention to themselves, to stay under the radar, because having your name on a huevo meant that all your actions were now subject to public scrutiny. No one even wanted to play soccer during recess anymore, because what if you missed your shot? What if you tripped and fell? That'd make headlines on a huevo for sure. A teacher would ask a kid to answer something in class, and he'd decline to comment because he didn't want to risk saying anything stupid. So the teacher would ask another student, and she'd say she doesn't wish to speak on the matter, even under threat of both of them getting detentions. We were in a constant state of paranoia, afraid that everyone around us was a TMZ paparazzo just waiting for us to make a wrong move or say anything stupid. Does anyone know I walk kinda funny? Has anyone noticed I have a weird way of holding my pencil when I write? Fuck, my mom put peanut butter and crackers in my lunchbox for the second day straight, now everyone's gonna tear me a new asshole on a huevo. One girl was being harassed so much that she refused to go to school one day, and after her parents kept asking her why, she told them everything about a huevo, and they contacted the school. The principal assembles everyone at the basketball court, and he's super pissed off. He says he's uncovered our little gossip website, and he tells us that if anyone writes anything about another student on a huevo, it'll call for immediate suspension. And then he says, Come to think of it, even if your name is mentioned on a huevo, it'll also earn you a suspension, so tell all your friends to be on their best behavior from now on. And that's when we know we're fucked. So we're dismissed, and throughout the day everyone's promising that they're not gonna write anything. We're making everyone swear on their mom's life that they won't mention our names. The biggest kid in our class says if his name shows up on a huevo, he's gonna beat the fuck out of every one of us, even after the person that did it admits it was him. People are offering their lunches in exchange for immunity from the impending a huevo bloodbath, and everyone knows there's no way we're all gonna come out safe from this one come tomorrow morning. The school day ends and I'm dropped off at baseball practice, and for the next two hours I do terrible because I'm just hoping and praying I haven't been mentioned on a huevo by the time I get back home. After practice, I get home and I rush 
mouse over to the computer, I go to the website, and my heart sinks when I see a topic with the most replies I've ever seen on a huevo titled Los Ultimos Tiempos, The End Times. The author of the post is someone called El Nazi Supremo, the Supreme Nazi. I click on the thread and it's paragraphs upon paragraphs mentioning people from school. It's the longest a huevo post ever. Whoever the Supreme Nazi is, this is his magnum opus. I start sweating bullets, and I hit control F on my keyboard to search for my name and see if it shows up anywhere in this fucking novel this kid's written. So I type in Andy, and it says zero results found. I take a deep breath, and then I type Andres to see if that shows up. Zero results found. Nothing. I'm safe. Somehow I managed to sidestep the Supreme Nazi's nuclear bomb of an Awebo post and I'm safe. I scroll down on the page to see what people have replied to him, and I see the first reply is just a continuation of his first post, the Supreme Nazi still mentioning more and more people. The second reply is still him naming names. And the third one. And the fourth one. I scroll all the way down to the last reply, and it's still him, and it ends with the word continued on next page. I look at how many pages this topic has and it's 15 pages full of this crazy kid's rant to end all rants. I start sweating bullets again and I realize these truly are the end times. The supreme Nazis come for us all and by the time he's done, absolutely none of us will have escaped his wrath. I go to the second page of the topic and I hit control F again. I take a deep breath and I type Andy. Zero results. Another deep breath, and then I type in Andres, and there I am, somewhere in the middle of page 2 of the Supreme Nazi's fucking tome. With him writing something about how he's caught me making out with the vice principal in his office several times in the past, but he's always been afraid of saying something until now. I scroll past all his posts until I get to page 10, and that's where I see the horrified replies from the other kids. Stuff like, fuck you Supreme Nazi, what have you done? Or stuff like, my dad's gonna kill me, who the fuck is the Supreme Nazi, I didn't do any of that shit. Or just simply, no. I think about maybe telling my parents what's going on, but I'd already gotten in trouble at school just a week before for something else. So if I start telling them about Supreme Nazi this and making out with the vice principal that, there's no way it'd go over well with them. I start thinking about what to do when a crumpled up paper catches my eye in the trash can next to me. I grab it and it says Andy sucks how Omaru rules and ones and zeros over and over. And that's when I remember I know just the guy that can help me. I log into ICQ to send him a message, but for the first time ever, he's not online. I run over to the phone and I call his house but his mom picks up. I tell her, I'd like to talk with Hacker Dude, please. And she says, I'm sorry, he started feeling sick ever since he got home from school, so he went to bed early. And she just hangs up on me. I call again and I ask her if she could please go wake him up, that it's important. But she tells me, I'm busy making dinner and he's already asleep, sorry. And she hangs up again. I'm pissed off at his mom, I'm pissed off at him, and I'm even more pissed off at the Supreme Nazi for getting me involved in all this shit. I get the idea to check and see if the hacker was named in the huevo post, so I search for his name on page 1. Zero results. I search page 2. Two, zero results again. I go through all 10 pages and the hacker doesn't show up anywhere in the post. It's undeniable proof that the hacker is the supreme Nazi. The supreme Nazi is a hacker. And he's in bed right now pretending he's sick so he can stay at home tomorrow and laugh his ass off at the shitstorm he's created. I send him an angry message on ICQ and then I go to bed dreading what's gonna happen tomorrow. The next day at school, the hacker isn't there, of course, but it looks like a lot of other students had the same idea because half the school didn't show up. The principal calls everyone to his office over the intercom and tells us all to line up right outside. I'm lined up in front of a 10-year-old kid the Supreme Nazi named and he's crying and saying he didn't even know about a huevo until today. The whole school staff is in the principal's office and they have five chairs lined up in front of them. So the process is, the school secretary reads through the Supreme Nazi's post in order, bit by bit, and she writes down the names of five kids involved and then they call those people into the principal's office in groups of five. Everyone lined up outside is going through a mix of emotions because they're making everyone call their parents to come pick them up because they've been suspended so that terrifies us but at the same time we're also trying our best to contain our laughter because each time five new kids are brought in they're all told what it says on the supreme nazi's post about them so the principal says Mario this is proof that you've been named and the reason you're going home today and the secretary starts reading it saying things like, Mario likes to go to the zoo and he pulls his pants down to show the monkeys his blank. He has the smallest blank in the school and he shows the monkeys because he knows they won't judge him for having a small blank. This is all true and has been verified with the zoo's authorities. 
So everyone outside is laughing their ass off as quietly as they can. And even though it sucks, I'm gonna be suspended. I can't wait to see the face on the vice principal when he finds out we've both been making out in his office when no one's looking. They dismiss another group of five and the secretary breathes out a sigh of relief and she says, okay, page one out of 10 is done. I look around and I remember most of the names I saw before mine in the topic were kids from my class and not even half of them showed up. So I know I'm dangerously close to being called up next. Until we hear the principal get upset in his office and he says what do you mean it's not there and the secretary says i don't know page two isn't there and she says i'll go to the website again and she gasps because the whole website has crashed she shows the principal the page and all of us in line start cheering and pumping our fists but the principal says don't celebrate yet we made sure to have a printout of the entire thing but the secretary says printout i wasn't told anything about a printout and the principal says what no i sent a memo it clearly said print out the pages and they start arguing why didn't you tell me in person if it was so important why didn't you read the memo that's the school standard communication protocol and the principal goes over to the computer and starts trying to reload the huevo page but it's gone forever we're sent back to class and we're all the happiest we've been in a long time the school day goes on like normal and the principal had to deal with 20 parents coming up to pick up their kids asking him for proof of what they did, proof that he no longer had. After the Supreme Nazi fiasco, Awebo was down for a whole week, so by the time it came back online, everyone at school had already moved on to the next thing. The hacker kept insisting that he wasn't the Supreme Nazi, and he told me when he read the post he noticed a lot of other kids had been left out of it too, not just him. He said he didn't show up to school because he truly was sick, and he also denied having saved the day with his hackery, and told us that websites go through maintenance from time to time and we just got lucky. No one knew who the Supreme Nazi was or how exactly we all got saved from suspension on that day. All we knew was that our huevo wasn't cool anymore, and we could all go back to not worrying about what our mom put in our lunch that day, and walking around funny and not caring about it or holding our pencils weird after that everyone was free to do what they wanted and enjoy being a kid and everything was great until the day friendster came along and high five right after that oh and then myspace was a thing can't forget about that one jeez yeah everyone had a little page and like it was just fun.